Hello, whistlers everywhere. Um, so this is a video which I'm going to uh, go over the um, whistle breathing techniques, which we talked about the diaphragmatic breathing and how important it is to be able to breathe in the correct way. And I'm going to show you now just a few simple exercises which we can use to help encourage the diaphragmatic breathing and to be able to use our diaphragm correctly so that we can uh, basically play whistle more effectively and we can hold notes for longer and also it helps develop a much better tone so the first exercise is really simple and i suggest you start off doing this one fairly slowly so we're going to start on a g and we're going to tongue the first note but the rest of the exercise we're going to do just by using our diaphragm to push the air through at a quicker rate. So we're going to go from low G up to the high G and back down again. So here we go. And again. So if you notice when I'm breathing in, there's no movement in my shoulders, there's no movement in my chest because it's all done with our lower diaphragm. So. Then we're going to go down to F. E. And then bottom D. And remember, always lift that finger off to get the middle D. Yeah. So let's do that and try and do it in sequence. So. OK, now we're going to go from G up to the B. And what we want to try and achieve with this, because we're only tonguing the first note, we're not using our tongue to get up to the higher register. We're doing that just by increasing the airspeed and pushing with your diaphragm. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and link that together and we're going to go from B all the way down to the bottom D. And we're going to try and do that all in one go. So you're going to tongue the first note and the rest is all done just with breath. So here we go. Now, don't worry if you run out of air. It's whistle dependent. Now, this is a lovely uh, boxwood whistle made by Simon Styles of Western Whistles. Um, and whistles have different air capacities and air hungriness. This one is a moderate kind of whistle. It's not too air hungry, but it's not a light one. This um, Blackwood Fred Rose whistle doesn't require nearly as much air but it does have a different kind of tone to it. So depending what tone you want, if you want a more breathy kind of Clark's tin whistle sound, it's going to use more air. If you want a more focused, tight sound, then something like the Fred Rose whistle or possibly a Kalani or a Wild, uh, any of those whistles probably won't require as much air. So as I said, yeah, don't worry too much about losing your air and if you've got to breathe you've got to breathe but only start off the next phrase and tongue that first note so every time you breathe you're going to tongue and no other time with this exercise so let's recap on what we're doing we're going low high low and we'll start off again with the b and go from low high low a low high low g and we want to try eventually to get this all in the one a uh, long phrase. So, and again. And you want to have enough air at the end to be able to sustain that D. If you run out of air midway through the exercise, 
as I said, don't worry, because just take another breath and repeat it. With practice, you will eventually be able to extend your lung capacity, probably a reasonable amount. Um, so if you're new to whistling and you're finding yourself running out of air, it's not an issue at this point. The, what we want to try and do is develop that diaphragm, develop that breathing capacity and start you off using the right kind of breathing that you're going to need. So we're also going to do this the other way around. So we're going to start high, low, high. <clears throat> so same kind of thing. So I'll show you on the G. F sharp. E. And D. So if we go again from top B all the way down, high, low, high. Again, if you run out of air, it's not a problem at this point. Um, you might want to break it into two halves so you could go. Take a breath. So we're going to go up and down. So vary it between high, low, high and low, high, low. So we can go. And then what we can do is high, low, high. there I ran out of air it happens to us all so um like I said don't worry about it try and extend that breathing as much as you can but the idea is not to make you suffer and not to make you go blue or pass out or even feel faint yeah the idea is to do it in a gradual stepwise way so bring that on what we can do is we can start off slowly so we can go once you can do it slowly try doing it a little bit faster and doing it in longer phrases so we can go and then if you can get to bottom d so then what we can do to extend that is we can go low high low high and just alternate between the different registers so we can go As I said right at the beginning, if you need to breathe, you need to breathe. So don't worry too much about that. The main focus of this exercise is not just extending the length of time you can play or the length of time you can hold a note, but it's also to be able to move between the registers cleanly without relying on tonguing. Now, tonguing is a whole nother subject which we're going to look at in a later date. Uh, for now, what we're going to try and do is you're going to try not to tongue very much at all, because what we're going to look at uh, in the next few series of videos is all about finger articulation and moving your fingers cleanly and rhythmically, because that is the most fundamental thing about whistling. Tonguing is important, but we don't want to use tonguing to obscure sloppy fingering. So we need to make sure that the fingering is clean and the fingering is precise. And again, um, I'm going to do something else about that in a later video, all about fingering and all about sort of general positioning and holding of the whistle. But for now, this whistle uh, video is all about breathing and breath control. So that's one exercise which you can look at doing. Now, the next one, I'm afraid, isn't quite as interesting. In fact, it's a little bit mundane, but it's a really good exercise to develop 
a strong tone and also increase that capacity. So all we're doing is just going down the scale from B and then we're holding the bottom D for as long as we can in a very pure way so that the note doesn't waver, but it's strong and it's steady. So like this. And you're pushing that bottom note only with your diaphragm. So as you're blowing out, you can feel that diaphragm muscle pushing the air in a controlled way. And again. As you get to the end of the note, it might waver a little bit. Don't worry about that too much, but we want to aim for a nice strong tone. The wavering may happen because you're struggling to uh, come to the end of the phrase or the end of the note, should I say, uh, and the breath isn't quite as controlled. So again, hold it for as long as you can and try not to let that bottom note waver or wobble. Let's try it again. And once you can do that, go down to the E. F. G. And A. Now for the B, we're going to go down from C sharp. So it's going to go. So what you're aiming for with this uh, breathing exercise is a pure tone. We don't want any fluctuation or variation in, in the pitch. We just want to try and get a nice, pure, unadulterated tone. And once you can do that going down, make sure that all the notes are even. We can do that in the upper register. So the same thing applies. And then for the last one, C sharp to B. We can go all the way up to high D, but uh, it's a bit shrill. I don't particularly like playing whistle uh, in that kind of stratosphere. Uh, so yeah, concentrate on the upper register and the lower register. So with the upper register, because you have to push air through it at a, at a greater speed, you'll find that you won't be able to hold the notes as long as you, as you can do with the lower register, but don't worry about that. Everyone has trouble holding notes for long periods of time in the upper register. Uh, it will come in time, you'll get much more strength and much more ability to sustain notes in both registers, but um, Everybody, when they first start playing whistle, struggles with those high notes in the upper register because you need more air speed. You need to push the air quicker through the whistle to get that higher register. So again, yeah, you're not, it, it shouldn't be a struggle, yeah? What we want to try and do is to increase it incrementally. So we're not gonna go from zero to 60 in one short space of time. What we want to try and do is over a period of say a month or two months you will notice a difference in your capacity and if you're doing it with the correct technique and again the correct technique just to reinforce we're going to push with our diaphragm yeah not this shallow chest breathing but a nice deep diaphragmatic breath so when you breathe in your stomach goes out and when you're blowing 
your stomach is going back in again. So you're pushing with your diaphragm. Okay, so this is one other little exercise which we can do, which is basically moving from low to high and high to low. And again, we want to try and do this slowly at first and carefully and really make sure that the uh, jumps from the low to the high and back down again are done cleanly. So really focus on this, yeah? So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up the lows and the highs and we're going to go high, low, low, high, high, low, low, high. So high, low. And then reverse it. So we go low, high, high, low. So just to summarize what we're doing with this exercise, we're practicing and teaching ourselves how to breathe in a controlled way using diaphragmatic breathing. We're learning how to move cleanly between the different registers, not using tongue, but only using our airspeed, which we're controlling with our diaphragm. And we're also learning how to control the tone. So what we don't want to introduce at this stage is any sort of variation in the tone. We're looking for pure tones. So with those pure tones, there shouldn't be any kind of wobble or any kind of vibrato, which you may do just instinctively, especially if you're a flute player or a classical flute player. You may instinctively, because you always play with vibrato, you may instinctively transfer that to your whistle playing. But this is what we want to avoid because we want to just aim for that pure tone. So when we're doing it, yeah, pure tone, try and keep it as steady and as pure as possible. So. And eventually you'll be able to move quickly between the lower, upper, lower registers and just do it all with diaphragm. So you can go. And other way around. So a few exercises for you to try, give them a go. Uh, and again, speed is not important at this stage. If you need to practice it really slowly, then I suggest you do. The technique is important and getting the pure tone and a nice balance between the low and the high register is really important with this exercise. So take care and have fun with this i know it's not going to be easy it's not the wildly interesting exercise but things do get a bit more interesting i promise you so give it a go i can say that it will certainly help you it certainly helped a lot of my students and it certainly helped me so take care and i'll be putting up another video very soon